Today we're going to be making Chelsea buns and all the ingredients are below in the comments section so have a look there. I've actually doubled the recipe um, because it's easier to show you then and I get a better yield from it. So we start with our bread flour and we add that or strong white flour um, and we're just adding that now and to that we add our salt um, and then we'll just put that on the KitchenAid which I've got here. It's an old KitchenAid but it, you know, as with all KitchenAid products they last the length of time and uh, just give that a good mix through on the dough hook just to get all that mixed together and then what I'll do is add some um, tepid milk with a bit of butter in it but this dish you could equally do in a mixing bowl by hand so the same principle here you put all that in mix the salt together by hand then you add your yeast and then mix the milk in by hand so everything you're doing in the mix, mixer you can do by hand so all I'm going to do now is get my butter together with my milk and uh, add that to it and there's many ways that you can heat this you can heat it on the stove top in a small saucepan or in the microwave whichever you find find easiest and for ease of this I'm doing it in the microwave so I'm just taking a small piece of butter there and um, the right amount as it's stated in the in the ingredients below in the comments add this to the milk full fat milk is ideal but skimmed milk will do but I, I prefer for this recipe full fat milk um, and I'm just going to put it in the microwave for a few minutes equally you could um, use uh, a, a, a pan on the stove as I've already said but I just prefer for ease and uh, once this is done add, add your yeast and I use instant yeast and uh, fast acting instant yeast very good product um, and, and it proves really quickly as well and, and always gives me an excellent product um, and, I, and I put this into the mixture with flour and salt and just give it a quick mix to do. This same bread mix that we're making now, or, or Chelsea bun mix, is a bread mix, a yeast dough. And it's basically the same mix that you can use for buns, uh, for donuts, and all manner of things, pizza bases as well. Uh, a very versatile mix. And now that my milk is warm, I'm checking it's not too hot. It's just blood temperature is what we want. Um, just to get that yeast going and start growing um, with, with the rest of the ingredients there. So I'm put, pouring it in here and if it's too wet, add a touch more flour and again if it's too dry, then add a little bit more milk to, the, to it. But don't forget your eggs, which I'm adding now. I'm placing the eggs into a cup first uh, before I add them to the mix because if I was to get shell into the mix, I wouldn't be able to get it out. But if I get a bit of shell into the cup here, I can scoop it out again and I haven't ruined the whole mix. And give them a little mix up with a fork and then just pour them into your yeast dough as well that extra um, creamy texture within the dough itself so giving this a really good mix together now I can see that it's coming all together I don't need any more liquid in it it's just the ideal amount and just keep that mix mixing round and uh, again if you're doing this by hand then of course you're going to be kneading this on the table keep kneading and kneading and folding and pairing and kneading and, and here it is coming out here, it's not quite ready yet, you can see that it's starting to rip, rip apart um, as opposed to stretch, which means that the gluten is not fully activated yet, you need to get that going inside to get the bubbles in and get a lovely texture, it needs to be a nice smooth texture when it comes out, so just keep that moving and, and moving away, um, and, and as you're doing it, what we'll do now is we'll grease our tins, I'm using an old grill tray here because it's a large tray and it's non-stick as well uh, although I'm still going to grease it slightly just to make sure it eases out the pan when they're cooked so I'll give that a good greasing round and uh, continue with the, with the mixing get it all in the corners all the butter it just it just helps it when it comes to take out the tray and they just ease out nice and as I say I've doubled the mix that's on the ingredients below but because I want a lot of Chelsea buns because I was taking them to a village fate if it happens. So now that yeast dough looks like it's ready, you can see it's nice and stretchy now. An elastic band, that's lovely that is. And then you get it out and put it all together. It should just resemble the back of a watermelon, all nice and smooth when you tuck it under. 
that's lovely. Just, just the right texture that we're after. Now. So release the dough hook, take it out, and another way to check, you can see the dough hook comes clean. That's another way to check that you use dough right. Fold it all round on itself, so there's no creases in it at all, like that. And then just put it in your pan and leave it to crew for about 30 to 45 minutes. And it should be about double the size. Cover it with some clean film and also a, a damp kitchen towel if, if you prefer, just to keep the air off it and stop it getting a, a skin. And keep it somewhere warm, maybe on the windowsill or, or you know on the side of the stove, not directly. You don't want to kill that heat. You just want a nice warm temperature for it to brew. As I said, wait 30 to 45 minutes, and da, there we have it, doubled in size and it just peels out lovely from the container that's left in. See how that is, so stretchy. And as I've said, that'd be a great, it's a great yeast dough. It can be used for pizza doughs, can be used for donuts and bread rolls. And in fact, later editions of my channel, we will be making some bread rolls and I'll show you how to make simple bread rolls. But look how smooth that is. So we just lightly flour our surface now. Touch of flour like that, done from a high area just so you get a great load of flour all over it everywhere there not too much because you don't want to dry that dough out and just start to shape it now into an oblong shape Keep rolling and as you can see I'm lifting it at the same time just to stop it sticking rolling stretching pulling you know it's a great dough you can see the way it's stretching there so uh, you know I think we're gonna have some good results for our Chelsea buns later just right for a cup of tea Carry on like this, keep stretching away, you can see our daughter there helping me with the, taking the pictures, bless her, rolling away, stretching, pulling, and you keep going there. And there's all sorts of things with Chelsea buns, you know, people use sultanas, some people use mixed peel, you know, if the kids don't like that and you want to try something different, then you could just put some, sprinkle some chocolate in the centre of it instead, and it'll have great effects as well. So, uh, you know, it's entirely up to you. You want it to, you can do little pizza ones, line it with some tomato puree, brush that over it, and then some chopped cheese and ham, you roll them up, and you've got pizza swirl. So, very versatile, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. As I said, we're going to do Chelsea bun. Roll it out so it's so thick and it's there. Um, not, too, not too thin, but not too thick, as you can see there. And then we melt some butter, and we pour that all over the top there like that, get it all in the corners, all this melted butter, just the butter that's um, left over, and then we get some brown sugar there, open that up, and we sprinkle that all on it. Again, it doesn't have to be brown sugar, you could use Demera sugar, you could use caster sugar, or even granulated, but for this we're using some brown sugar. Sprinkle that all over, try and get a good even coating all over the dough itself, all in the corners. And then we'll do some orange and lemon zest as well. Remembering to use the zest to sign and just get a good, you know, bit of lemon on. Don't go past the um, orange bit and into the white because that gets a bit sticky and it's the taste. Today you can see, you know, we've got a nice even coating of orange zest. And then my sultanas are going to go on now. And you can see I'm sprinkling those on again from high high. Again, if you want to use chocolate chips instead, use them or use both. It's up to you. Sprinkle them all on. And then here we're using cinnamon, and we're going to sprinkle that on as well. And the cinnamon's getting sprinkled on all, all evenly over. Um, again, if you don't like cinnamon, you want to use mixed spice, or in fact, if you don't want to use anything, then you know it's up to you. And then we're folding it and keeping it nice and tight. You can see the tightness that we get in there as we're rolling it round. Rolling it, rolling it up. And now comes the really fun part where it's all nice and tight. In a minute, squeeze it all together. Yeah, work it with your, your hands, it's all nice and squeezed together. Now you could cut off the end, but I prefer to leave the ends because waste not, want not. And all we're going to do with a knife is find the middle roughly, cut that through in half from the middle, and don't too hard, do a sawing action because that way it doesn't squash the chelsea buns. Again, half of that again. And then half again, and then the next load will just cut into thirds. That's it. So you're just sawing gently as opposed to pressing when we were just, say, flattening those shells. 
So now I'm going to cut them into three, each one of those halves that we've done. And we'll have some great tasting Chelsea buns later. Don't get rid of those oranges and lemons that we've got on the table there. We'll use them later for our stock syrup, which will glaze the Chelsea buns when they come out of the oven. Be careful there with a the sharp knife as you're cutting through Chelsea buns. And there we have it. We get our pan and we lay them in. We take the tail and we tuck that back under because what we don't want is when they're cooking that to pop out. We just tuck it back under. We, tack, we, we place them in the baking tray a fair distance apart because these are going to prove again now. And we're going to wait till they're double in size once they prove before we put them in the oven. And, uh, we, and when they prove, they will compact together inside that tray. And then when we bake them, they'll all be sealed together and it'll keep them nice and moist in the oven. Uh, and, and you'll get that lovely Chelsea bun when they come out. Some people place them individually on trays, but I find they dry out around the edges. So it's best to keep them nice and compact together. Now you could, if you wanted, sprinkle extra sugar on top here, but I don't think you need it because I think it's plenty inside the mix. Uh, and I don't really don't think it needs any more. And we're going to be adding that stock syrup afterwards as well. So uh, there'll be plenty of sugar in there and, and more flavour to add afterwards. So again, I'm just going to cover them now, so you can use a damp tea towel or equally some cream film just to stop it getting the skin. Again, put it somewhere warm for about half an hour, and then once they've, they've doubled in size, put them in the oven on gas marks, gas mark 5, for about 40 minutes. But keep an eye on them. Um, you don't want them burning too much, they just want to be a nice golden brown colour. Uh, just keep an eye on them when they are in the oven, um, and, and they are a joy to watch, especially if you've got a glass front of the door so you can see them right. But just keep checking on them after about 25 minutes, just to check that they're not getting too hot, they might be rotating around in the oven somewhat. Um, but like I say, just leave them for 30, 35 minutes first to, to prove and double in size, and, and, and you, you know, they'll be fantastic then to pop in the oven. And these are quite a long dish to make, they take a good time, but yeah, it's well worth it. And there you can see they've now proved and doubled in size, um, and they're now going in the oven on the middle shelf, gas mask 6, um, for 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, and we'll just leave them now to, to rise in the oven, and already you can see that the, the way that they're starting to rise. Once they come out of the oven there, um, nice and hot, you've got your stock syrup made, which is your oranges and your caster sugar there, and a cinnamon stick, just heat it up, and once that's boiling, uh, take it off the stove, and then brush it over your Chelsea buns, immediately they come out of the oven. And then all I'm doing here is lots of different things you can do, I'm just adding some icing sugar over the top there, with, which has been knocked down with a little bit of water, and then sprinkling over some flaked almonds. And that's the dish made now, leaving five minutes to cool down, and there you have Chelsea buns. Please subscribe to my channel, and next week we'll be making more dishes, and every week we'll be adding more and more. Thanks for watching, and again, please subscribe, and I'll try